Lord, to be able to behold You is a gift. And uh, through the truth of Your Word, we're able to understand who You are and grow to understand that even more. Lord, we'll, we'll spend, for all who believe in You and follow You, we'll spend eternity learning about You and being in awe. What a privilege it is to start now. What a privilege it is to be together and stir each other even to worship You and to honor You with our, our lives. And so, Lord, I pray that You bless tonight. Lord, would You give me clarity of, of uh, communication? Would You um, give us all hearts to want to be humble to Your purposes and to be eager to find them in Your Word that we would encourage each other with it tonight? I pray that the outcome of this time of thinking about worship, the way that You've instructed and the way that You've cautioned against, Lord, would be something that motivates us to uh, want to be worshipers personally in our lives, um, in the mundane and in the great things, as well as um, corporately when we get together to sing and to uh, spend time sitting on the teaching of Your Word and taking communion, um, observing baptism with people, all of the things that we do. Lord, I pray that uh, we would just be motivated to be worshipers of You, uh, even as a result of tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm thankful to be back again with you all. This is um, this is exciting. I've uh, whenever the Lord asks, or whenever the Lord puts me in a position and gives me an opportunity to teach, I'm the one that ends up growing probably far more than anybody else. Um, and so I've been spurred on by these things, and I hope I can share just a little bit of it. Um, most of you know I'm on staff here as the director of music ministry here at Grace Bible Church, and so I've had. Um, a lot of years of forming like why we do what we do. And so to be able to teach on it and to share it, I hope is, is, um, is helpful to you. And, and one of my other goals is that I want to give you a foundation. If you're going to be in church and you're going to have these ministries that we talked about last week, um, I want to be able to um, be effective at like helping you see why we're doing what we're doing so you can participate and you can be a part of it. Um, last week we went through the four ministries. Everybody who's in the church and a believer uh, has four ministries that that you, when you open your mouth to sing or when someone stands up to lead like Cooper just did, uh, you have these ministries. And we went over these in detail last week, but just in, in review, the first one is to worship God. Uh, obviously, that's that's in all of this. And actually, it's not like you're choosing which one of these ministries to do. It's, it's all four of these all the time. But the very first and foremost one is that Scripture makes it very clear. Open your mouth and sing because God is worthy and you lift His, his name and you exalt uh, His character and you ascribe glory to His name uh, because you're, you love Him. And uh, you commune with Him as you do that. And so there's a lot of examples of that in Scripture. Secondly, it's in ministry to each other. There's, there's all these passages that talk about singing truth to God in worship in ways that support, that stir up, that encourage um, that speak truth to the people that are around you that just need to hear it from someone else's voice in their own lips. And that is an encouragement. And y'all are an encouragement to me and to the people that you're around when you sing like that. Uh, <clears throat> third, in ministry to one's own soul. When you're singing, there are times where you just gotta, you know, you're not just ministering to the people around you with these truths. Your own soul needs to hear this truth. And I confessed with you last week that I need to hear that a lot. Um, I need to wake up and tell myself that. And be faithful to and it's really a blessing uh, when y'all are singing it and I get to hear you confess it as well uh, but I need to point it to my own soul and say soul listen up praise the Lord uh, he is good uh, his salvation is wonderful and you've got nothing to fear uh, and then the last one is uh, in ministry to unbelievers among us and uh, to a watching world um, I was a non-believer sitting in a church singing songs and you know what? There were people that just really believed this stuff. And it changed them. And I watched them sing. I watched them not just sing. I watched them do everything in the church fellowship. Uh, and it was a ministry to me as a young man. And I could argue all the Bible verses and stuff, but I did not know Jesus until I, I saw people who really lived it, who really loved it. And when they sang, they meant it. And so it's a ministry. Everybody has these. Um, so, But here's where I'm anxious to get tonight. So what? I always love to get to the so what, right? 
So you see all these how to's, and we got to some so what's last week. I hope the discussion groups got to some so what's last week. Um, but I wanted you to see just a brief insight to what goes into creating a music ministry at a church and your participation in it. Um, if these things are true, then that should shape everything we do as a church, right? And there are other passages too that are nuances and details, but how does somebody, how does somebody go into a church and say, we're going to sing this way. We're going to sing these songs. We're going to have them stand like this. We're going to arrange the room like this so that we can do these four ministries and we can encourage them to do these four ministries. A uh, little um, spoiler alert. I'm not the one doing these ministries. If I'm up here doing music or Cooper's up or if you were up here doing this, the guy up front is not the one doing the ministries. It's y'all. And a music ministry has got to draw in an entire church and to participate in that in spirit and in truth, which means it has to align with these things. So if we shut all the lights off and tell you to put yourself in your own little bubble and have an experiential moment with your Lord while you're praying, that's not corporate worship. Nothing wrong with that. But you can do that in your own home, in your own closet. You can't. That's not what we're called to do when we gather like this. When you call to gather, there's a purpose. So it's just one example. It's like, this is why we do certain things the way that we do. And uh, it works out in a lot of different ways. So I'm going to walk through a few of those things. And I'm going to do two things. Uh, how, therefore, if Scripture says this, how do we go about doing this at GBC? So you can start to see, oh, there's a purpose for that. And then the other thing is, is okay, then what is my part? How do I personally participate? Um, doesn't matter how long you've been a believer. How long you've been coming to church, how old you are, how young, it doesn't matter. These are all things that, that apply. So the first thing I'm going to just bring up, there's like a handful of these things. And I just bleed over, bleed about this all the time if you just come talk with me. But I figure I'd try to put it all into one little spot and give you some of the highlights. Uh, particularly the highlights that people ask the most questions about or have needed the most shepherding on how to think about. So I'm just going to give you some of those. And when I run out of time, I'll stop. And then we'll go on. But if you got more questions, come talk to me. This is this is my my. This is my thing, and I love it, and I'd love it to be your thing. It should be every church member's thing uh, to know these things. So, first of all, I just want to talk a little about song selection. If those are the ministries that we're supposed to have, and we went through all those verses, we have to see like what God has to do with that. Um, what does that mean? How do we select our songs? And the reason I say that is if people come and ask me, hey, how come we don't do this song? Or, hey, would you be willing to sing this song? And, you know, that's great. If you got suggestions on great songs that the church would be blessed by, uh, bring them to me. But here, here are some criteria. Um, they have to serve those ministries that we talked about, which means fundamentally um, the very first thing, when, and, and there's always these new songs coming out all the time, and, and I love listening to them, but um, I'll just let you know, the way that we choose songs around here is number one, first criteria is truth content. Everything is based on truth content first. I strip all the music away. I look at the lyrics and I read them. And I, and I say, uh, is this biblical? And is it the stuff that scripture like says you should be singing? And if so, then great. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm sorry, I won't even listen to it. I'm, I'm just going to like, there's too many good songs out there that we have to like get into the rotation. Um, and that's our first criteria. Uh, and not all of them are great. <laughs> um, if, if, if it doesn't have solid biblical truth, then it's not useful for the four ministries that we talked about in the corporate singing. You know? So we're going to pass on that. doesn't mean it's bad. doesn't mean it's evil. doesn't mean you can't listen to it in other settings, but it's not going to take the time of one of the four or five precious slots on a Sunday morning that we get to sing together or a Sunday night. Uh, there's only so many of those slots, so we want to make them great. The second one is it's got to be singable as a group. And so I go through and I say, hey, is this a melody that most people can track with? And if it's just a super cool, groovy tune that only like a jazz singer can pull off, then, you know, most of the people in the congregation aren't going to be able to participate. They're going to get lost and they're going to feel like, oh, I can't really do this. Um, it's got to be easy to sing in a group. And so that's the next criteria. And that's an important one for corporate worship. Uh, and then the third one is music excellence. Um, it should be music that was written skillfully and with artistic beauty. That's the whole point of music. And if it's kind of um, blasé or if it's just kind of a cheap pop song that came in, it's going to flash, you know, and be gone. You know, probably not, even, it's, even if it has some good truth content. Um, but it has to be excellent uh, musically. We want to offer good music, and um, there's a lot of poorly written songs, and so we kind of filter those out. So those are the primary criteria. So why do, I, why do I share that? Well, because, number one, it should show you that when we're doing these things on a Sunday morning, 
it's gone through a rigor. Hopefully you can like trust that and take that and be able to maybe more readily just, you know, lock on to the, those truths that we've thought through. Uh, Smet and I have even rewritten a couple of phrases that we think are not clear in very, very popular songs because they're like, I don't know if people are going to even know what they're saying. I want them to be able to like grasp this and sing it like they mean it. So let's just change the lyrics or let's explain it. You know, uh, here I raise my Ebenezer. Look, I'm going to sing that, but let's explain what is an Ebenezer. You know, it's stuff like that, you know, so um, we've got some of those. So that's how we do that. So what does this matter to you? Uh, hopefully you can participate knowing that that's the point and that they're meant to facilitate those ministries. Um, secondly, personally, not just corporately, but personally, let, let me just encourage you. Um, there's just not enough time to explain all this. So let me just jump into it. Um, Listen to good, theologically rich music during your week. I'm not saying you can't listen to other kinds of music or we could have the whole discussion about secular music or instrumental. Those are great conversations to have spiritually as you're developing. With, talk with your parents about what's wise. Particularly, guys, if music grabs you, music is, is causing you to dwell on certain things, you really be careful about what it shapes your mind to dwell on and think like, okay? Any kind of music. Okay. But let me just for a moment, worship music with truth content during the week. Let me just encourage you, um, go make a playlist. Let's, don't, don't just reserve those for Sunday mornings. There's good music. And, it, and it, it, in fact, let me ask you this. Of the four criteria, the four ministries that we just talked about, don't go back to them, that'd be cheating. Um, of, the, of, <laughs> of the four ministries, which of those four ministries can you still do? when you're not at church corporately and you're alone? Anybody? What? Minister to your own soul. That's one of them. That's true. You don't have to have anyone around to sing a song that's going to encourage you, strengthen you, encourage you. What else? Yep, and personally. What's the other ministry that we're going to talk about? Or that we talked about? Worship of God. That's right. Exalt God. So let me just encourage you. Do that. Um, my heart needs to hear that, particularly with all the other media content. And it's, it's, it's useful. Find, make a playlist of songs that speak truth to your soul when no one else is around and you can sing it. And uh, there's a lot of people who are diligent to do that. It's a little bit like reading your Bible, but it's not inspired. Okay, it is doctrine and truth. And so be careful um, of that. And then the second thing I'm going to tell you is if you're going to create your own playlist, use the same criteria I just did. Truth content first. And this is why I wanted to get to this. Guys, um, sometimes, look, musicians don't get famous because they've got the best theology. Songs don't become top songs because they've got the most best theology. So don't assume that just because you really like this musician or this artist or this band, that they all got good songs. Guys, some of my favorite musicians have written, well, Christian musicians, have written great music, and I like grab onto one or two songs, and one comes out, and I'm like, whoa, what? I just, I'm not going to sing that song. That just, that's just, so just use truth content as your grid. It, that's another good thing to talk through with your parents, or with me, or with anybody else. What are good songs during the week? Like, maybe th things that aren't corporately singable, but man, they minister to me during the week, you know, and I've got those too. But make truth content, be, learn to be discerning. And do this, please, please, if you find a band that has a lot of really good songs, don't assume that all their songs are good. Uh, I'm not saying you got to be afraid and run away from them, but there are some bands that clearly have terrible theology, terrible gospel, wrong truth. You just want to stay away from those bands. But there are some that have good songs. And sometimes we'll do them on a Sunday morning. But if I went to Spotify and started playing everything they played, I'd be like, I don't want my church listening to this. So just use discernment is all I'm saying, okay? Um, but... Please use this during the week to minister to your soul. Um, if you have more questions about that, again, I'm available. Talk to your parents about it. Talk to your discussion group leader about that. But I just want to encourage you to use that. Uh, let's move on to this. So there's selection of song corporately and then personally. Just so you can start to get a, a feel of the criteria of you growing in discernment on how to do this stuff. The next topic I want to talk about is your participation. We're talking about corporate singing. I just There's a lot of questions people have about how to do that how to do that well, how not to do that well, okay? And I, I don't know, well, I know that we can't get into all of it tonight, but I'm going to give you a few of these, okay? First of all, um, let me just say that one of the first criteria that we've already talked about, the very first week when we talked about worship, it was whole life worship, 
And, and we, there are verses like Deuteronomy 6, 5, for those that were going to be true worshipers of God. It says, you shall love the Lord with all, uh, Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. We read, we read it, Jesus says the same thing. You can read that in, in a very similar thing in Mark 12, 30. He says, and you don't have to look these up right now, but, um, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Do you hear how that involves your physical uh, everything, your heart, your mind, everything. And um, so when you're, when you're participating in worship, it's not a surprise to us that we get to Psalm 82 and we read this. I will give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Or Psalm 111, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I mean, you just see this over, what does that mean? All my heart. Um, or even, we already read Colossians 3.16, that let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, singing or teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs doing what? Singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Look, this is just a, a personal, just let me encourage you. This is what it looks like to engage in corporate worship and song personally for you. Um, Engage with your whole heart. Be engaged. And how, what practically even further, what does that look like? Well, it looks like singing. First of all, participate. Sing. That's your first one. Uh, if you're standing there and you're letting everyone else sing and you just kind of go, ah, don't feel like it. Or even, you know what? I'm not a singer. I'm not a good singer. So you know what? I'm going to bless the church by not singing. Not an option. Um, and I got to tell you, even if, you're, even if you think you're tone deaf, work on it. You know? Uh, but, but sing. The point is to sing with thankfulness in your heart. It doesn't mean you got to be the best singer. And so it's a cop-out. I'm just saying it's a cop-out. Um, if you don't sing, just participate well. Um, and then when you're singing, sing out. Sing like you mean it. You know? Um, I get it. People are kind of tentative about singing. I stand back there and I sing too. I close my eyes and I, I realize, man, there's someone's head right here. I'm singing out. I'm so sorry, whoever I'm standing, sorry. Um, I'm not trying to be distracting, but I am trying to sing out like I, like I mean it, and I do, and I love this time with y'all. So I, I just want to model that for you. Sing out like you mean it. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you know, it's possible to sing out for the wrong reasons. It really is. And I don't, I don't want you to do that. Use your discernment. It will distract from all the ministries we talk about here if you draw attention to yourself during this time. So sing out, but like if you start singing so loud that no one, you know, that it's to get attention or that no one else around you can hear anything, they can't participate. And it detracts from those ministries and you're not blessing them, you're, you're, you're distracting. And so you don't want to do that. I get it. I, I was probably bordering on that. And so I, I want to be careful, right? But I want to sing out like I mean it. Um, or if I sing super flourishy or something like that, just uh, don't steal the glory that God deserves. Don't be a glory stealer, all right? But sing out. I just want to encourage you on that. Here's the next thing. If you're standing there and you're engaged and you're singing out, you're, you're not bored, right? Engage with the truth content. That's the second thing I want to tell you. Be engaged with the truth being sung by the church and that you're singing. It means you're going to have to think about it. You know, some people have come and they've really encouraged me. There's been some people in this room. And they say, you know what? I just didn't know what those phrases mean. We kept saying it. I went home and just studied it. Looked, you know, found some passages that like actually quote that. I think you got the backwards, but you know, I think the song is quoting scripture. But but anyway, I love it. Go figure out what that means. And then next time you sing, you're like, ah, oh, I got this. I'm singing that song. I didn't even know what that word meant. I know what an Ebenezer is now. I'm all, I'm all for it. You know, um, sounds funny, but now I know it's meaningful. So engage with with truth. Um, and let me just tell you this, if you're doing this, if you're singing in a way that thinks about what it's about and you know like where it's at in Scripture and like what that is because you're being taught like Scripture, uh, you know what's going to happen? Um, eventually, you're going to be affected by this and encouragement. You're going to be encouraged. Eventually, your heart is just going to be like all in. Um, and you know what's going to happen? It will affect your feelings. It will affect your emotions. Really? Emotions? Yes. You'll get excited. Or you'll get convicted. 
or it will it will it will help a hurting heart and you will weep can i just encourage you um that's supposed to happen that's what all your heart means i'm not holding this back i'm not pretending like i'm stoic it's supposed to when you are gauging with truth and dwelling on it and proclaiming it to the Lord in worship, to each other in testimony, to each other, to your own soul in its need, to unbelievers listening, it should have an effect of encouraging and strengthening and refreshing and reviving your faith and your hearts rejoicing in the Lord. It should. And emotions and feelings are actually assumed in Scripture if you're engaged, genuine, and have a right relationship with the Lord. This is the right and proper place for your emotions and feelings to be involved in corporate worship. You know why I bring that up? Because there's a lot of misconceptions about emotions and feelings in worship. And there are whole churches and whole movements that are trying to tell you to do it wrong. But that's the right place to put it. Um, unless you are looking at Scripture and deriving your pattern for worship, like how to do this from the Bible, it's really easy to get this out of whack. It's really easy to get the cart before the horse. There's a danger in making emotion the purpose or the goal of your worship and music. In other words, uh, this dangerous idea is like when you see emotions or feelings as the reason why you want to go sing. I want to go have an experience. There are whole churches designed to give you an experience. And guys, look, I love some of the people there. There are believers in those churches. The Lord is doing work on those churches, but they got the wrong idea of, of of, of worship and it can be dangerous because here's what happens. If you go and you're like, I'm going to sing and try to, so I can feel this. You've got the caboose pulling the train and you end up feeling awful if you go there and you just didn't feel it that day. It must not have been good worship. It becomes your criteria for whether it's good worship. I'm sorry. Scripture actually says the opposite. Look, obedience and submitting yourself to the Lord if you do this long enough and you dwell on this truth and you grow on it, you'll, you're going to start to feel it eventually, but some days you may not, and that's okay. <laughs> Check your heart. Make sure it's still beating. Uh, make sure there's not sin between you and the Lord. But I'm just telling you, um, when we start coming to worship in order to get the feeling or experience that feeling that we love, we're no longer worshiping God for the reason he's given us to worship. We're singing to get us what feels good to us, and that's not glorifying to God. It's actually self-serving. And glory stealing again. So we do not sing so that we can get the feelings and the experience. And also we don't measure the genuineness of our worship by how we feel. And so if you're not really feeling it, uh, that's not the right measure. Um, so emotions are not the goal of the worship. They are not the measure of the worship. Um, and if you are, you're, you're, you're missing the point. But if you do engage in this truth, in the truth that we sing, and in biblical truth, and you're beginning to grasp and learn and grow about what that's like, and you're speaking that to your soul, and you're hearing other people speaking that to your soul, it's okay to be affected by that. The Lord is hoping that your heart is involved and it's still beating. If you exalt God for it, the things that He's said in His Word, your heart will be affected. Some days more than others, I get that. This brings up one more topic. What about outward expression? And that may bring up all sorts of questions, okay? What about outward expression? When you engage in worship, and with the truth being sung, and you're fervent and heartfelt in it, you will naturally have an outward expression of some sort, and it will look different with some people. Um, look, if you're the type of person that when you're talking about your favorite thing, you're like this, just so encouraged and just calculated, processing it all inside, not a lot of expression on your face. You're just straight, right? Look, maybe that's going to be different than the guy who's like gesturing with his hands. Yeah, this is me, right? Clearly, I'm walking around and pacing and um, great inflection with my voice, right? That's my style. Look, that's just natural for me. So guess what? When I sing and something comes up that's my favorite gospel line ever, <laughs> I gesture sometimes. That's okay. There's body language that says, I'm engaged. <laughs> I've got an expression on my face that says, I love singing this song about that Savior, and I hope everybody in the world sees it. 
That kind of expression is great. I think um, that's another one of those things that there, we've seen done wrong. We've seen people use expression to try to get a response or an experience. They'll raise their hands for a reason that God never says that's why we raise our hands. They'll say things and respond in ways to try to get the experience. Guys, again, that's the, that's the caboose pulling the train. Uh, the feelings are the caboose, <laughs> the, re- the response are the caboose. But I'm telling you, when you look at Scripture, um, Psalm 47, verse 1, starts with this. Oh, clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with the voice of joy, with great rejoicing. Um, so if someone claps in response to something, I personally, I'm not going to say, hey, 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 stop that now. That sounds a lot like those people who maybe think like maybe they're a part of a different religion. No, uh-uh. That's just natural. It's biblical, actually. Um, so I, I don't want to shut that down, even if I'm not feeling it at the moment. <laughs> I'm not responding that way. And so I would want you to encourage, let's, if I just keep reading uh, Psalm 63, uh, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied with marrow and fatness, and I will, my mouth will offer praises with joyful lips. That's in the middle of worship. So he's wor- raising his hands. Why? Because his heart is engaged with the truth, and he is before his God. That's an, actually a very appropriate thing. Now, do I, do I want us to be all just doing this for the sake? No, 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 no. And there's a lot of comedians, by the way, that really um, have this all figured out. If you've ever seen that with the TV holding and the, the goalposts and the, I don't know what this is. This is anyway, but the point is, we're not, we're not trying to mimic anything like that, nor do we want that to be rote. Just like if I were talking to you, I wouldn't want you to start using quipping lines with me the whole time. Like, engage with me, talk with me. Um, but if I talked with you and you had a deadpan face and had no response to anything I said, I would assume you are really not engaged. And so it's okay. So my, 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 my heart is this, guys. I just want you to know there's all sorts of biblical postures for worship that we don't necessarily practice here. I'm not laying you know, prostrate on the ground is a biblical posture of worship, and we probably couldn't do that very easily here without being distracting, maybe not the time and the orderly place to do that. But my point is, is that if you've ever been concerned, if you're from a background or from a church that maybe um, worshiped with a lot of expression, but didn't have all the truth there, and you just don't want to be like that, I want to let you know, the fact that that happened doesn't change the biblicalness of, of, of responding like this. And so don't be afraid if somebody does that. And, and please don't judge. Flip side, those of you that are like really engaged and there's a person standing next to you singing like this, don't judge. Um, that's legit. Some of my favorite um, people in the world, when I first started leading worship at my last church, I was up there the first time playing, and they're just like this. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm doing something wrong. And then they came up afterwards. In fact, this was the chairman of the elder board. He came up to me afterwards and said, Chris, thank you for leading. I was just gripped and worshiping my Lord with that truth. And I was like, wow, I had no idea. You know, <laughs> I didn't tell him that, by the way, uh, until years later. But my point is, is, you know, there's a lot of um, variance and expression in these things. And I just wanted you to know uh, we're not afraid of that here at Grace Bible Church. We want you to check your heart first. Are we engaged with the truth? Is this a genuine expression? And then secondly, don't be distracting. You know, uh, if you get up and start running around or doing something like, you know, like that's not, again, it's not helping these worship uh, ministries that we have. Uh, so do it in order and, and don't be distracting with it. What's your heart motive? And don't distract with it. But within those contexts, sing out. What's your heart motive? Don't distract with it. Sing, sing out. Um, re- respond. Um, don't do it for the feelings. But if you are, if you get emotional because of that, you don't have to be afraid of that. You don't have to be. You don't have to apologize for that. In fact, the Lord says, "I want your heart." If your heart's not in it, be diligent. Do it anyway, and and that those will follow. In fact, I think Piper says, "If your heart's not in it, do it anyway. Repent. Ask the Lord for help, and then and then the the feelings will come. But don't do it for the feelings. I think that's where we really get ourselves in trouble. We really get ourselves in trouble when we say, "I just." I wanted emotional experience this morning. I didn't get it. it must not have been in good worship. No, that's, that's not how it works. 
Um, man, there's just a lot we could talk about there, but I just want to bring it up. And if you have questions, um, talk to your discussion group leaders, talk to your parents, come talk to me. We'd love to just encourage you in that. One more thing. Um, I want to talk about worship leaders and musicians. What's the, what's the role of a musician in this? Because here's, here's why this really matters. Again, like I told you, I've, I've had people tell me over and over, ah, I don't really get into worship because I'm not a musician. So, you know, got a lot of layers here. First of all, worship isn't music. I think we learned that the first week. Um, secondly, uh, you, don't, you don't sing because you're a musician. Um, you, you sing because the Lord is worthy of it. And, and he says, open your mouth and sing joyful heart, joy, from a joyful heart. And so there's a lot of reasons for that. But what is the purpose of worship leaders and musicians? I just want to set the record straight. Uh, sometimes it's easy to fall into the, the cultural norm that the people up front are the ones that are really bringing the worship. You know, and that's why you can walk into a church and go, oh, man, they're really bringing the worship. Right. You know, because whatever's happening up there, um, it, it's easy to do that just because I think when we go to concerts, it's that way. You know, you kind of come for what they're doing and it looks a little bit like church. They're up on stage. We're all standing here. They're doing music. Um, the people that are up front leading in worship, they're not the worship. They're, the whole purpose for them is to lead the entire congregation to do those four things. That's, that's my job when I'm up there on a Sunday morning. I, I want you all to be led well. I don't want to do anything to distract from you all doing that. I don't want to do anything that would um, maybe give you the wrong impression about what we're there to do. I just want to facilitate that as much as possible. On all the musicians up here, uh, whether it's Cooper on his guitar and that's it, he's bringing the best he's got. He's, he's wanting to get you singing. He's wanting you to do this. Um, the Lord gives such talents to people within the church as gifts to the church. So if we got a guitar player or if we got a flute player, if we got a djembe player, if we got a harp player, we have a violinist, please, Lord, bring us the gift of a violinist. Um, the Lord gives these things to the church just like He gives preachers and He gives evangelists and He gives... Um, people with hospitality, people who will love you when you're hurting. And so um, I want to encourage you, if, um, the musicians and the people up front, they're not the worship, but they're there so that the church could receive the blessing of doing corporate worship well. And let me tell you, if you've got excellent musicians up there, they're not there for entertainment. If they're really excellent at what they're doing, you know what happens? People that didn't even come and want to sing suddenly want to sing. They just get wrapped up in it. Guys, I'm not, I'm not apologetic to that. I don't want them to emotionally get wrapped up in it, but I, I do want them to experience what it's like to sing like that. And if we play clearly and sing clearly, people who can't even sing that song on a Wednesday morning by themselves because they can't carry a tune will open their mouth and sing along and participate as part of the choir. Praise the Lord. More people singing. More people giving glory to God. So why do I bring this up? Um, the Lord gives such talents to be used to bless the entire congregation. And when we have an electric guitarist like Matt York up front, and he just knows how to do tasty things, it just sounds so, oh man, it's musical, it's expressive, makes me want to express, right? And now suddenly people want to participate, and that's a beautiful thing. Can I just ask you, if you're, if, if you're musical, um, if you're taking lessons right now for an instrument, if your parents are making you take lessons for an instrument or for voice or something like that, um, can you start thinking now, can you start praying now about whether that's one of the gifts, one of the skills that you could work on over a lifetime that the corporate church could benefit from? Think about it now. Some of my favorite people that were leading um, at our other church before in Kansas City, before we came here, uh, I, I saw at your age, taking lessons. And by the time we left, they were, they were blessing the church in ways that we just manifold grace, different styles. Just I just couldn't imagine it. Um, it's a direct opportunity to use your gifts, not just for the Lord, but for the church, to do ministries of corporate singing. 
So if you're a musician, you're working to grow, you're interested in using that skill for the Lord, what, what should you do? This is, this is my recruiting mechanism. Um, talk to your parents about possibly serving the church with music someday. Someday. Come talk with me. If, if your parents are good with that, um, I'm the point person for doing music ministry here. And I, I love to encourage people where they're going and just say, hey, here are some things you can be working on. Here's what we need up there. Here's how we could use something like that. Um, we're starting to use more musicians here in student ministries. What's the criteria for leading worship? Well, you got to be a believer and you got to have a life that demonstrates it. And I don't mean perfect. But do you know how to repent from sin? Are you doing that? Are you in fellowship with people in your church? Do you love your church? Are you committed to the church, involved with the church? Are you here? Man, if you, if you love serving that way, um, great. Uh, for me, we got to have skilled musicians up here. So you got to have some level of skill, and you must be continuing to work on to hone that skill. And you got to understand the ministries that we talked about. But I'm just inviting you to think and pray about that now. I don't care what age you are. If music is, is, a, is a gift that the Lord has given you and you're working on that skill, think about it. Well, I don't know, maybe five years, ten years. I don't know. Do I ever want to use this for the church? Um, the t- stuff that we've been talking about here, it's compelling. I just want to let you know, um, I'm interested in talking to y'all and encouraging you in that. And um, whether it's this church or some church that you go to when you're in college or something like that, I mean, um, music is a gift that does a lot of ministry. And you can participate in helping the church. Just like I said, a a music leader, man, I'm just the choir director. The true choir is y'all. And it's such a blessing to the Lord in his throne room. What a fragrant aroma to have the voices of young and old, people of every walk of life, every background, singing his praise. And you can be a part of that. So I'm going to pray for us. And then if you have questions about any of that, come talk with me. And uh, I hope you were encouraged by all this, but let's, let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you equip the church so that they'll sing. Lord, in some churches, all they have is an MP3 player, Spotify. Some churches have musicians that you've given them and raised up, and we thank you for that. But Lord, for whatever circumstance it is, Lord, we want to recognize what the purpose of singing is. It's not about the music. It's about your glory. It's not about the experience. It's about engaging with lifting up truth. And it's not, it's not about all the other things that, that sometimes we enjoy, even though we enjoy it, Lord. We want to give you glory, and we're thankful that you cause it to be such a beautiful thing in music, that you make music beautiful. And we, we thank you that, um, that we can all be a part of that. So I pray that we would be encouraged to do so now and in the years to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Chris. All right. So Chris left us, left you guys with a lot of opportunity to ask questions. You could tell he had a lot more to say, and there were a lot of rabbit trails we could have gone down. So don't forget, we have the Q&A box in the back. I know you guys have dropped some, and I am actually working answers into the next few weeks. Those are getting looked at. I'd say this is an opportunity to invite Chris back. If you guys ask enough really good questions, we could put those together and maybe get a, get a redo. Um, chance to, to answer those about playlists, which songs, your involvement, all kinds of things like that. So now I want us to go to discussion groups. Remember, in discussion groups, we do two things primarily. We ask, we rehearse, we try to remember what was said. There was lots of stuff that was said. And then you never go away from reading the Bible or listening to a sermon, merely knowing what was said, having all the information in your brain, right? You have to go away and say, how must this affect me? So I want you guys to focus on that together, um, personally, and then help each other uh, in the groups. Remember what Chris said, and then really importantly, walk away and say, this has to affect us. Student ministries, if we take everything we learned for the last three weeks and we apply that for the rest of this year and the rest of our lives, we will all personally benefit, the church will benefit, and God will be glorified. So let's get up, go to your discussion groups. Kiki has a question. Oh, that is a good point. Everybody back down. 
Elijah, can you come up here? <laughs> Elijah, stand up. Come up to the front. Elijah, up, up to the front, right here to the podium. Everybody. All right. You only turn 17 once. We're going to make this a memorable one. Everybody stand up and sing at the top of your lungs. Happy birthday to Elijah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Elijah. Happy birthday to you. Good job.